The World Cup, the dates for the World Cup in, in 2010 were defined years ago. They're not going to change because the IT systems aren't ready. Those dates are going to happen. And that hitting those dates and having the IT systems ready for those dates is a very important goal. And it's not about the money. I mean, the, most of the work is sponsored anyway. Uh, but it's about, hitting, it's about hitting the deadline and having a system that works. Now, us out here, as developers, as project leaders, um, you know, as salesmen or whatever role we have, we have our own ideas about success. And yes, we'd like to get the, we, we want to arrive. Uh, first, we have to win the bid, which is kind of a non-trivial problem because there are other people who want the bid, uh, which may encourage uh, people to push on the price more than they really ought to. Uh, that encourages all kinds of interesting games. Everybody, anyone ever heard of the change request game? The change request game is very simple. It takes three people to play. You have um, you have a customer project leader, you have a customer project leader, oh, sorry, you have the customer, the guy buying, you have the IT project leader, and you have a legal assistant. And the legal assistant accompanies the IT project leader to every meeting uh, where they discuss the scope of the system. And what does this person do? They keep a very, very accurate protocol of what was discussed at the meeting. And then on the basis of this protocol, you examine the equally carefully defined contract about what the scope of the project is. And anything that wasn't in the scope of the contract is a change request, which is very expensive. And so the way you make your money back on a fixed price bid is you lowball the bid, that is you bid it at a price that you're going to lose money on, and then when you, uh, uh, you, know, you play the change request game to turn the project uh, profitable again. Uh, some people don't like this game. Uh, other people say, well, this is the way the game, the, the way the game is played. Uh, Agile isn't really set up to play this game, which is kind of an interesting problem. Uh, so, yes, we want to have a happy customer, and what does it mean to be successful? Well, we're trying to get the project finished. We'd like to have a definition done. We'd like to measure to be, uh, we'd like the customer to be happy, and we'd like our accountants to be happy at the end of the project. So, what are we doing? Well, we're really managing risk. Okay, there are a lot of things that can go wrong, and what can, we want to make sure that the things, uh, the things that could go wrong that none of them put the success of the project into question. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if you can read the fine print here. It says risk management. If you take too much risk, make sure to do it on a grand scale to ensure a government bailout. Why um, from the financial industry? Does anyone work for the financial industry here? I don't want to. Okay, how, how big was your bonus last year? <laughs> Sorry, that's an industry question. So, we will move on. So, what I want to talk about today, I want to talk about how to go about uh, a, a project where you've got tight constraints on the budget, on the scope, on the deadline, uh, whatever it is. I want to talk about basically three topics. The first is, is the whole topic of managing the risks. And to do that, I want to talk about the, um, uh, what the software development process is like and um, communicating with the customer. And then I'll look at how we actually execute a project to have a good chance of finishing it on time, on scope, on budget. Maybe you've heard the word lean applied in the context of software development. You've got to be careful about this because uh, when we start with lean, we start with uh, production. We're trying to make tens of thousands of automobiles as efficiently as possible. With the software project, it's a one-off. Okay? And so what we see is the complexity that you have in a software project, it's up here where you've got more unknowns than knowns. And the problem with the unknowns is uh, they, they have feedback loops. And so if you have, you don't know how your customer is going to react to the project, to, to the work that you've done until they sees it. You can't predict it. Uh, when you're building a car, a customer ordered the car with air conditioning, well, you can predict what happens if that air doesn't work, but it's much more difficult to predict uh, or it's not difficult to predict that if you deliver the note in air conditioning, he's going to be happy with it. So what we need to do is we need to get this complexity under control. And how do we do that? Well, let's go back in time. Let's start with something really simple, multiplication. Everybody in the room can do that? Everyone with me so far? Anyone not with me? Good. Uh, so that's probably about third grade. My daughter's in the third grade. She's going to multiply. She's a little bit beyond one, one times one. but. Uh, this 
decision is not ready for yet, because you did it maybe the fifth grade or the sixth grade. And we say, well, let's take that multiplication and apply it to an area. And we learn fairly quickly how to calculate the area of a rectangle or a triangle with some simple formulas. And kind of as a next step, we say, well, maybe we can do somewhat more complicated areas. Okay? Probably by the fifth or sixth grade, we know how to calculate the area of that. And then a couple years go by towards the end of high school, maybe the start of college, we get something that looks like that. And those of you who remember college mathematics are probably saying, oh my god, I can't do that. But you can. Uh, and the approach is really quite simple. You chop it up into pieces, and each of these pieces starts to look like those forms that we learned how to calculate before. And then the area under this curve is simply the sum of all of these pieces. Okay, and this is essentially what we're doing with a software project. A Scrum project, or an XP project, is nothing more than a collection of fixed time, fixed effort, many projects with fixed quality, fixed scope. By the way, how many of you people are doing extreme programming, or trying to do extreme programming? Okay, how many of you are doing Scrum? Okay, how many of you XP people can't stand the Scrum people? <laughs> okay. Uh, from my point of view, just, just so I, I don't step on anybody's toes here, um, I got into Agile through Scrum. Uh, I, as I say, I was a developer a long, a long time ago, but I would say the world was different back then. We were doing 8080 assemblers, and a big machine had 320 kilobytes, count them, kilobytes of main memory. Uh, much, much later, I discovered Scrum as a management process and used it to save a couple save a couple of sinking ships. One of the things which I discovered is that, particularly as I started coaching and training, is a lot of engineers wanted to do extreme programming, but they couldn't get their management to sign off on it. As soon as they mentioned the word pair programming, and managers were kind of conditioned to say no. They said, you want two people to do the work of one? Why should I pay for that? And what was interesting about Scrum is Scrum actually creates this this iterations where we say we have a sprint and it's a fixed price, fixed growth project. And it also clearly defines the confidence, you know, the, the jurisdiction. The product worker has his jurisdiction and the team has their jurisdiction. And the team is allowed to decide how to do things, which means the team has the freedom to say we want to do extreme programming. So if, if, if you're into extreme programming and you're having troubles getting your management to accept it, convince them to do Scrum. And that will give you space to do uh, to do extreme programming. Did anyone see the movie Dirty Dancing? Dirty Dancing? Okay. Remember the scene where, I, I don't even remember the names of the people, but the, uh, the, the sweet young thing is getting her first dance lesson and she's kind of all over the floor and into his space and he says, wait a minute, that's your space, this is my space. You stay in your space, I stay in my space. Okay, and that's kind of how you start dancing. Well, this is what happens with Scrum, is you get the team and the product owner to respect each other's space, and then afterwards, once once they do that, then they can learn to work together, and then, like in the movie Dirty Dancing, that, you know, over the course of maybe a year or two, they actually grow back together and work very closely and very cooperatively together. So, why do I say fixed price, fixed growth? Well, when we look at the classic, how do project managers think about projects, they've got three, maybe four, the good ones have four parameters, but most of them have only have three. Uh, a lot of people, ever heard of the Iron Triangle? The Iron Triangle? Time, scope, 